So welcome to how to use your deck profile, NATI, which stands for Nemesis Agro Theory Invoked. So in this video, I'm going to do uh, showcase my deck profile and showcase one of my favorite decks that I've been working on in 2020 and really been updating it time and time and time again. I'm still uh, the last ban list that happened really quite hit it quite hard since I lost uh, Hockey Firebreak. So I've come back again. Uh, with uh, this deck. There's still a lot to improve with the side deck. I feel the main deck is alright. But anyways, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so we have Alistair the Invoker. The magician of our dreams! This is a uh, level 4 spellcaster that we play in our Nutty deck. That's crazy. With Nutty stands for Nemesis Agro Therion Invoked. So anyways, um, we'll have Alistair Invoker there, which you'll add with Magical uh, Meltdown, right? And so when you normal summon Alistair, you get yourself Invocation when it's normal summoned. Uh, bear that in mind. So you'll normal summon it, and then you'll go and link summon into Artemis, you know? Use Invocation with... Uh, the Artemis to go into Mechaba, right? And that's essentially it, really. So this is one of your cards you're gonna be going into, um, you know, turn one um, with with cards such as uh, terraforming, possibly, or you'll be using um, set rotation, yeah, depending on the hand that you have. So you really want in your hand, like ideally is when you banish a card, you'll want a Nemesis Flag to add yourself those Nemesis cards. And that's basically it for, you know, talking about Alistair the Invoker. Okay, and here we have our MVP, the card that begins your locks. It's Nemesis Flag. Please, that's right. Nemesis Flag. Is a level two pyro so what's its effect its effect is is that you can add any nemesis monster from your deck to your hand except itself now one recurring theme that all nemesis monsters have is that they can target a face up banished monster to special summon themselves return them to the deck to special summon themselves all of the low level nemesis monsters have this effect that's really convenient um, but flag is going to be your key card and it's going to be your rotor. So you're essentially going to be adding um, Arch Nemesis Escatos. Lock time begins. Uh, which will lock your opponent. And when, when you have flag on the in your hand, turn one, then it's usually that time. You don't get to play, you just lose. Exactly. So that's essentially it when it comes to talking about Nemesis Flag. I will speak more about how uh, this deck works with the next cards that I'll be showcasing soon. Yeah, and here's my two of. Two is the best number for this job. In my nutty deck. That's crazy. Nemesis Umbrella. So this is a really good card as, again, it's... Clause that all Nemesis clauses have is that you can target one face up banished monster, return it to your deck to special summon it. That's really convenient. Actual monster effect is target one Nemesis monster in your graveyard, except itself, and add it to your hand. So it's a really, really good, fantastic card. And you usually use it to return back your Skatos or your Nemesis flag that you've use that's in your graveyard to get that recursion so that you can keep on locking your opponent lock time begins so it's that time whenever we have nemesis umbrella in your hand and it's on the board okay let's move on and here we have our one of you're my number one nemesis corridor this is a card i've decided to play at one it's really good card again let's go over its effect so its effect is, is that you can target one nemesis monster that is banished, accept itself, and add it to your hand. Guess what happens now? So similar to Umbrella, but instead of adding from the graveyard, you add from banished to zone 
instead. Fantastic card, great again for recursion and for if your cards are banished, if you are to banish them with this Gathos, um, when you have added it off of Nemesis Flag and such sort of things. Great card to, it's also, fun fact, a card that allows you to make um, Thunder Dragon Colossus because it's a Thunder type. So there's that going for it as well. And yeah, so loads going for Nemesis Corridor. That's about it. Let's go to our first main deck boss monster in the deck. Alrighty then. And so we have our first main deck boss monster, Arch Nemesis Iskalos. This is the boy that's gonna lock your opponent. Lock time begins. When this comes out, I use my famous catchphrase, which is... Do you know what time it is? It's lock time. You know it. So, essentially, this card is fantastic. While it's on the board, this is essentially a rivalry of warlords on a monster. We did lose Prototh, which was Goes and Match. Um, the reason why I lost it was banned because of Sword Soul, because of uh, Sword Soul Emergence. I um, definitely see Sword Soul Emergence in my deck profile video for Virtual Self. Uh, leaving that segue into Sword Soul Emergence aside, Escaros is a great card to lock your opponent. One of the strengths of n uh, my nutty deck, especially when it comes to Escaros, why I love it so much, is it's a great bait card and it's also a great card to lock my opponent and to just force out those negates. Like Escatos is one of those effects in the deck is that the opponent is forced to negate it because if Escatos' effect goes through then it means that they won't that they won't be able to sum, special summon a particular type which they will need 90% of the time. Okay, let's move on. Okay, and here we have our Omni Negate, Therion King Regulus. So Therion King Regulus is one of the only uh, Therion main deck monsters that I play. First of all, it's an Omni Negate. So who can say no to that? Perfect in every way. And we have its effect of it can special summon itself by targeting a Therion or a machine monster by equipping itself in order to special summon it. And when you do so, so let's demonstrate how that works. So you'll have this here. So let's equip it to it there and let's just move stuff around. So it'll be something like that, yeah? So this Therion Regulus will equip to that. And if uh, Regulus is equipped to a Ther uh, Therion monster, Regulus will gain an additional 700 attack points. So it should be on 3,200 attack points. Let's now go back to how it was before. So, yeah, let's just move that a bit there. So essentially, what this means is that when you do the negate, you're going to be sending the Regulus, or the machine, that is, if it's a Therion machine here, if it's equipped, you will send the equip, obviously, to the graveyard. However, if you've just targeted a machine, obviously, you're supposed to summon it, then you'll have to send the entire card itself to the graveyard to fulfill that omni uh, to fulfill the negation but leaving that aside it's a great card great omni negate very easy to facilitate especially with the field spell um therion disc coliseum which we'll talk about more in the spell section of this video okay that's really it and all i've got to say about therion king regulus my spice the branded package. So here I just use only Fallen of Albaz, really. This is the card I use. I use it as a super poly target. When nothing ruins the game plan. Go into cards such as Mirror Jade. Or we can go into um, stuff like Splint. Possibly Predaplanta Tragostopelia as well what else uh, and the titanic clad okay so that's really what we use it for we use it again to force out the negates to get the discard and really what i do sometimes as well if our hand is a bit peculiar we could discard the Ther the therion king regulus again we mentioned it again 
um, send it to the graveyard, activate, uh, you know, our disc Colosseum, add ourselves Regulus, then special summon Regulus, equip Regulus from grave, Gavin Omni negates, you know, and it spirals. That's pretty smart. So yeah, so we have Fallen Valbas, facilitate our branded plays, facilitate Therion plays, and just we can go from there. Okay, and so I play Light Hexil Fusion and Dark Hexil Fusion. So I play Light Hexil Fusion to be using to, as a target for Branded Fusion to be making the Albion, you know, so we can Fusion Summon. And with Albion, we could Fusion Summon and go to potentially our Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Or we use the Dark Hex to, uh, the dark hex to make the Lubellion, right? And then we could go into cards such as um, Mirror Jade, or we can go into our spiciest of spices, Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. Okay, and here are our last main deck monsters in our nutty deck. So we have Destiny Hero Celestial, Shadow Beast, and Destiny Hero Dasher. So, Destiny Hero Celestial and Destiny Hero Dasher, right? Those are used to be with our card, usually, um, let's go in here, Fusion Destiny, to go into Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. We could also be using Lebellion and the discards of Celestial and Dasher to go again into Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. Um, why do I play Shadow Beast? One of the reasons for that is that sometimes we just want to stall the opponent. We just want to um, stop the opponent and just grind them to a halt. So we, we, we play Winder as well. And also, if it is sent off of Branded Fusion, we get a free draw. So, so we just threw something for no reason. Just a free draw, a free plus one. Okay, so we have Magical Meltdown. This is the card that's going to be really important and one of your key card, my, the key cards in this deck. So on our activation, it allows us to add Alistair, the Invoker. The magician of our dreams! And not only that, but while it's on the field, the, your opponent cannot stop fusion summons. That's too strong! But you can, if you activate it and then no more summon Albaz, you can successfully super poly with Albaz's effect there because it's a super poly on Lex. Um, leaving that aside, it just opens up your entire deck as this deck is really fusion and pals with its themes and deck strategy and with the way it goes. It's designed to break, board, break boards and in the mirror match really, really be quite well against branded in itself. Okay, let's move on to the, our next spells. Alrighty then, so we're gonna talk about our MVP fusion spell, Branded Fusion. So Branded Fusion is going to be one of your key cards in uh, the nutty deck. That That's crazy. It'll go into several things. So you're gonna be using, first of it, you're gonna be using Fallen of Albaz, as you see there, with either Light Hex Sealed Fusion or a Dark Hex Sealed Fusion. This will allow you to go into several things. So, with Dark Fallen of Albaz and the Dark Hexil Fusion, as you can see there in front of you, you could go into uh, Lubellion, and Lubellion would allow you to go into Mirror Jade, if possible. Um, you could also have the Fallen of Albaz and the Light Hexil Fusion, and then you could be going into Albion. That Albion could allow you to go into, let's see here, if you play it right, into Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. There are several other things you could do. You could also go and just use Fallen of Albaz, and yet again, use Shadow Beast. So you use those two Fallen of Albaz and Shadow Beast to go into uh, Lu Lubellion, right? And with the effect and Lubellion, we're going into El Shadow Winder. 
Plus, if you've used Beast, if Beast is sent to the graveyard, you get to get a flea plus one. So we just threw something for no reason. Invocation. How will you add invocation? You add invocation with Alistair the Invoker. The magician of our dreams. Things you'll go into with Alistair the Invoker will be Mechaba, Raijin, and Kaliga. You're making Raijin with Nemesis Corridor. Okay, that's about it. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm main decking Super Poly in this, as it's really important to just break my opponent's board. I know Fallen, I know that um, Fallen of Albaz is a Super Poly as well on a monster, but it's good to also play the card as well. So we play three Super Poly and three Fallen of Albaz, so we always have a way to force out those negations. The good thing with Super Poly, um, your opponent can't respond to its effect activation. We are in the driver's seat. We decide who lives or dies. Um, you know, you discard, you know, Aetherian Regulus so that you can get yourself a uh, special summon Aetherian Regulus. You know, if it's discarded, another copy in your hand. There's just so many things you can do with that. That's why I usually like playing Super Poly. Great for breaking boards, great for setting you up, and who can say no to just free boss monster on your side of the field? Two is the best number for this job. Vision of Destiny, um, it went to two with our latest ban lists. Obviously, it's not at three. Yeah, I just play Fusion of Destiny because Fusion of Destiny is played so that we can make our next MVP, Destiny Hero, Phoenix Enforcer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the materials that we're going to be using are going to be Destiny Hero Celestial, with Destiny Hero Dasher to be making Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. And so that's about it. Let's move on to the next cards. Okay, and here we have one of our most important cards in our nutty deck. That's crazy. It's the Arion Discolosseum. So let's read this mouthful of a card. So when it's activated, you can add a Therion monster from your deck to your hand. This is most likely going to be Therion King Regulus on activation. And what is its other effect? So you can send one Therion or Endless Engine Aggro System from your deck to the graveyard instead um, if a monster will be destroyed by battle. So usually we are going to be sending this Therion King Regulus, the second copy, to your graveyard. And let's uh, read what else it says. Once per turn, when a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Therion monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So then That's really convenient. You're going to add your copy of Therion Regulus from your graveyard back to your hand. So let us get this straight. We've added an Omni Negate. Pro protect our monster once by from destruction by battle. Attack again, lose a card. At the end of successfully resolving that, you get to add the Regulus back into your hand so that on the next turn, you have an Omni Negate yet again. This is the full purpose of this Colosseum, is to get yourself your Omni Negates. Also, another way you could do that is that you could have Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade's effect, send Sprint. Sprint is a machine. And then add... Regulus in hand, you've added it through the battle phase, shenanigans or whatever, and then just special summon it again. Targeting Splint. And there you go. The possibilities are endless here. So, this Colosseum at three. No debating. Last uh, three cards in our main deck. And then afterwards, we're going to be going into the extra deck. So, we have Terraforming there. Call by the Grave and Set Rotation. So terraforming is really useful. Why? As it's gonna add your field spell, which could either which could be magical meltdown or Therion Discolosseum. Yeah, your core by the grave is there so that you can deal with those hand traps. Your set rotation is there to set either whatever, depending on your hand, magical meltdown, or your or your let's go there, Therion Discolosseum. Yeah. So that's really about it. And I think with that, we've just covered our main deck in our nutty deck. So let's now move on to the extra deck. Alrighty then. So let's talk about Artemis, 
the M Magistus Moon Maiden and Reprodocus. First, we'll talk about Artemis. Artemis is very important, as Artemis is going to allow you to be making our extra deck monster, which is Mechaba. But how is that going to happen? Usually, your, your turn's going to start, if you started off really well, with an Alistair. Alistair will be normal summoned, which will add yourself invocation, and then you will use invocation and Alistair to make yourself invoked Mechaba. When nothing ruins the game plan. The Artemis, of course. There. And so, where does Reprodocus come in? Reprodocus comes in sometimes when you go into game two or game three. Do you know what time it is? It's lock time. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. So when you start, yeah, um, essentially you're going to be using Arch Nemesis Skatos. Okay. You use Arch Nemesis Skatos, you lock your opponent. And because you know what their type is, and with Reprodocus' effect, you can reproduce, you can change to any type that's on the field or whatever you want, you can successfully lock your opponent. Our invoked monsters, which we use Invocation to make. So whether it's Invocation, Artemis, Innis, into Mechaba, or invocation and uh, let's just go to that next monster and albaz into kaliga or let's uh, do it again if we go into invocation let's go to uh, that exclusive one of in the deck you're my number one corridor into raijin we have several ways to uh, lock our opponent. Lock time begins. And furthermore, because when we use Invocation, we're more than likely going to banish a card. This means that we can get our Nemesis um, main deck monsters in our deck live, as we can special summon them by targeting a face-up banished monster. That's really convenient. So, in here, you can see El Shadow Winda. Albion, the Branded Dragon, and Lubellion, the Searing Dragon. So let's first talk about El Shadol Winda. So El Shadol Winda is going to be made usually with uh, our special source, Branded Fusion. Branded Fusion is when we are at a good place and maybe we want to slow down our opponent, right? We're going to be going we're going to be using the materials which are let's just go into this so we're going to be using the materials which are fallen of albaz and shadow beast to make lubellion lubellion will pitch any card and then you will then fuse with lubellion's effect to make el shadow window instead of making the mirror jade or whatever things that you want to make and so we have here the albion right so the albion um we could be making that again with branded fusion obviously and we're going to be using the albaz fallen of albaz and the light hex sealed fusion because as it says there the materials are fallen of albaz and a light hex sealed monster do that and then we will then banish this because you need to banish them fuse to fusion summon and then we will go into our spicy um, extra deck which is going to be red eyes dark dragoon yes ladies and gentlemen i go into the famed card there are no limits to the power of this card and finally let's talk about rebellion Lubellion is a card that we're going to be going into. So Lubellion will we'll use again Fallen of Albaz, right? And our dark monster that we'll tend to use is going to be, wait for it, um, Dark Hex Sealed Fusion. So we'll have Dark Hex Sealed Fusion and then we will go into our Lord and Savior, Mirror Jade, 
the Ice Blade Dragon. Fun fact, if we still can't go into that, we can also go into, you know and, you know and love him, once again, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon on the screen right now. So we have Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, Destiny, Hero, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, and Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. So let's talk about Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. So Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is our boss monster in this deck. We're going to be making it with either Fallen of Albaz again and the Light Hex. Okay, so next uh, we're going to then be talking about Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer, right? So we're going to be making that with our mighty card Fusion of Destiny. Fusion of Destiny can be made that by using these two materials. We use Destiny Hero Celestial and Destiny Hero Dasher to make Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. We can also, um, if we're feeling funky, make it via Lubellium as well, or Albion, if we have the materials in the graveyard. So bear that in mind. And finally, we have Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. So Mirror Jade is going to be made by, you you know and love it, you know, our dude, our main guy, Fallen of Albaz. And we're going to be using either Dark Hexil Fusion or using the Light Hex Sealed. Yeah, so bear that in mind. You could also um, Super Poly it with Super Polarization. Or super poly it with, you know and love it, Fallen of Albaz. With that magical card that you can't stop a super poly or you can't start, stop fusion summons, uh, which will be magical meltdown. So bear that in mind. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Predator Plant, Dragostopelia, Starving Venom, Fusion Dragon, and Titanic Lad the Ash Dragon. So these are going to be super poly targets, right? Or Fallen of Albaz targets, as Fallen of Albaz, is, if we read that effect there, has the effect of super poly, but instead it's on a monster and you can negate it, right? However, if you have Magical Meltdown on the field, then your opponent cannot stop the effect of Fallen of Albaz which is pretty much makes it the same as Super Poly. As Super Poly has a clause there, neither player can activate card effects or effects in response to this card's activation. Um, leaving that aside, Dragostapele is really useful, especially for that branded matchup, as you can just clean their board and make yourself a nice fusion monster. Same thing with Starving Venom. Uh, same thing with Titanoclad. You're basically using this to break your opponent's boards when you've opened up with your Fallen of Albaz in your hand or Super Poly. Break their boards. That's all they're there for. Okay, let's uh, move on. And here we have our last card in the extra deck known as Sprint, the Iron Dash Dragon. Now, why do I play Sprint in the extra deck? It's very important, actually. It's for this bad boy here, Therion King Regulus. As you know, this is a nutty deck. Nutty standing for Nemesis Agro Therion Invoked. And as we can see here from Therion King Regulus, uh, to special summon it, we need a machine in the graveyard. There are going to be times sometimes that we can't make the best board. Maybe we can only just make Mirror Jade. So we want to set up ourselves if we have Regulus in the hand and we have no machines or no or we don't have possibly um, the field spell Therion Discolosseum in our hand, which searches, you know and love it, Therion King Regulus, right? So what do we do then? Usually we're going to be making our Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Jade Dragon, and it can be enough at times, and so we will send that to the graveyard, yeah? Um, and so then on our next turn, when it's our turn again, we can then special summon Therion King Regulus, which will be in our hand, and equip it. And lo and behold, we have an Omni Negate. So, yeah. 
So that's basically what Sprint is there for. Plus, it can be used as a super poly target, but really, we're mainly using it for the Mirror Jane Scent to uh, non-target banish a monster on my opponent's side of the field. That's really what it's there for. Really, honestly, to get you that Omni Negate and to add that consistency. And yeah, that's about it for our extra deck in my nutty deck. Okay, so now we're talking about our side deck. So we have Invoked Purgatrio, Change of Heart, and Mind Control. Our Invoked Purgatrio is, we're gonna be, it's in our side. If we need to be going for those, um, you know, piercing damage, and we want to be using a Fire Monster, which is Nemesis Flag, from our deck. It may be useful, maybe not be. Um, you know, so that's why it's in the side. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Then we have Change of Heart. Change of Heart is there for just going second. So we can take control of a monster, do whatever we want with it. The same thing with Mind Control. Okay, let's move on to the next three cards. Okay, and one of my major weaknesses in the Nutty Deck, Crazy Deck, is going to be Floodgates and Face Up Floodgates. Like... Necro Valley and such sort of things. So definitely I'm going to be playing a playset of Cosmic Cyclone. Um, definitely. So that's at three. No debate, no question there. Okay, let's move on. And so we have our three of evenly matched. This is the card we're going to be using going second, second, breaking those boards. And I play it at three. Um, I don't know why Evenly Matched sometimes has vanished from our game. I think Evenly Matched is a really great trap card that we got uh, early 2019. And it's still a very good card that is aging like fine wine. And I think possibly like, you know, at a local, you know, I did lose a game because I didn't trust my gut instinct to side in Evenly Matched. And I think had I sided it, maybe that game would have gone a bit differently. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, so I just play one Therion Reaper Foom. Um, because it is searchable with the field spell Therion Discolosseum, I only play that one in my side deck. So, so the ratios usually would be if I need to bounce a card on my opponent's turn, I just play, I play two regulars and then just swap it for Therion Foom, Reaper Foom. Um, I have Mud Dragon of the Swamp. It's there again as a super poly target and it's there in the side. Sometimes it may come up, sometimes it may not come up. So that's why it's there in the side. Could be useful. Brigand again there is there for those um, in, in the side. If I really want to go really ham on super poly. So that's what it's there for. Just go ham on super poly and just like Super poly, my opponent's tap board, and just be going for game and stuff like that. Okay, let's move on to our last three of in our side deck. And here's my last three of. Here's my uh, spice. We have Rainbow Neos. So I'm sure you're wondering how we're making Rainbow Neos. Simple. We send, um, you know, Neos from deck. You know, we branded Fusion and. Fallen of Albaz. And then possibly the hand will have a light hex or dark uh, or yeah, light hex. Yeah, or dark hex, depending on what is there. So that we can then fusion summon into Rainbow Neos, right? So why is Rainbow Neos important? Um it's important in the side deck because you give us a game of the graveyard, and the graveyard has become the second deck. There may be there's gonna be times, quite a lot of times, where I will see my opponent have, or you will see your opponent have graveyard set up, have all these things. And it's good to just have a way with Rainbow Neos to shuffle those cards from the graveyard back into the deck and just deal with them properly. To just have non-targeting removal is just something that we uh, need to talk about. And it's really great. We have Invoked Agarides. Again, this is a great card that we can, uh, it's in our side there. Um, we can use it to banish another fusion monster in a graveyard, gain attack gain life, uh, you know, gain attack, make a big beefy body, and when it's fusion summoned, you can just pop a monster. Great card, and that's about it of all I've got to say about my side deck in my nutty deck. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer 
to coming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.